You ever wish Disney had its own Smash Brothers styled fighting game? In this video, we'll be crafting the ultimate 15 fighter roster using the Disney cast, covering some of their moves based off Smash Brothers characters, and sprinkling in bonus information like player skin, stages, music, and more. There's one issue that we need to settle before we start. Disney has become gigantic, so for this roster, we're choosing from strictly Disney animated movies only, or else this video will never end. And to make things more interesting, we're gonna mix protagonists and supporting characters. You can Mario to Nintendo, so of course we're starting with... My first thought is that Mickey should play like Mario since both are the faces of their companies, but research shows there's a noticeable height difference between them. So I imagine Mickey being a lighter version of Mario with a couple tweaks. I think it would be cool for him to move like his Kingdom Hearts version too. Diving into Mickey's moveset, we have the Spinning Brush, which I could see as a marriage between this move I borrowed from the Epic Mickey video game and Mario's Tornado. Since Mickey also dabbles in magic, let's add a Magic Wand Swing, which reminds me of Ness's back. His Willy Wheel pays homage to his first appearance in Steamboat Willy, so Mickey uses his wheel to fly straight up. This would play like King K. Rool's propeller back. For customization options, let's go for Steamboat, Sorcerers, King, and Magician. Mickey Mouse! Now that the most obvious character is out the way, let's get one of the most iconic Disney villains in here. Hey, how you doing? With his charm and wits in mind, I'm thinking Hades is on the lighter end and floats around the stage like shown here. Is it clear yet that I love Kingdom Hearts? And I think Rosalina would be a solid comparison for movement too. For Hades moveset, we have Hellfire, where Hades throws out a string of fire that causes damage on impact and briefly lifts the fighter. This would be a hot combo starter. Think of Zero Suit Samus's plasma whip in terms of appearance. Next, we have Hades emitting flames from both of his hands that burns his enemies in his flame wall attack. This also lasts a brief period and isn't strong. My favorite move for him is his Soul Snatch counter. If the opponent hits Hades while his move is active, then souls rise from the platform and hold them in place for punishment. I can totally see the underworld being Hades' estate. And if you had one-liners in the game, I see Hades saying, I own you! Game. Set. Match. Hades! Now that we're warmed up, let's move to the islands for our next fighter. You are not my hero. Moana is athletic, a sailor of Watanui who boards her boat, sails across the sea, and restores the heart of Tefiti. Translation, she's not a featherweight. She gives me Byleth vibes in terms of weight and fighting style. And since she's usually seen with an Orn combat situations, why not give her one in the game? Her moves include a clutch recovery tool similar to Byleth's. Moana throws her sailor spear to make her way back onto stage and for yoinking opponents. Borrowing from Byleth again, Moana swings her oar in an arc causing massive damage. This move is called Oar Strike. Then we have Belly Flop, where she sprawls her body and comically lands on her enemy. She has a wholesome victory screen that includes her animal companions Pua and Hei Hei goofing off together. Moana! The next fighter is gonna give this game a new fantastic point of view. Why, you hairy little thief. Our favorite treat rat is slim, slippery, and does anything he can to survive. These traits remind me of snake movement-wise. Although, I think Aladdin should be a bit lighter and floatier with higher jumps. I could also see him being a sword fighter slashing enemies with a shimitar. Aladdin would have a pretty busted recovery thanks to his magic carpet glide. With a brief moment of invincibility while doing a loop, the magic carpet uses inspiration from Steve's graceful Elytra move. His attack combo, Al's Assault, is a series of shimitar swings, punches, and kicks. Because of his floatiness, Aladdin excels while airborne. His Arabian punch is perfect for these combos as he launches opponents upward, leaving them stunned. A special property for Aladdin is Street Rat, which gives him a speed buff once he passes 100% damage. And sages that pair well with him are the Cave of Wonders and Agrabah marketplace. Aladdin! All right, I've had enough of these smaller fighters. We need some heavies in here. Pull the lever. It's all coming together. The all-loving and youthful Kronk is yoked. There's not an exact mapping to a Smash Fighter here, but the closest is between Captain Falcon and Ganondorf. Frong's moveset includes projectile spinach puffs, where a burst of three puffs are thrown at the enemy, becoming less damaging the further they travel. His full stomach move activates a lot like Refit Trainer's deep breathing, increasing his strength for 10 seconds. One of Kronk's grabs is the shoulder toss, which is pretty much DK's Kong carry. He scoops his opponent onto his shoulders, then hurls them away based on the player's directional input. Kronk has a fun set of looks, so we're gonna go with Devil, Angel, Lab coat and chef. Wrong. Let's continue down the heavy train with this recently introduced selfless queen. On it. I'm just 
just letting y'all know right now that Luisa would either be my main or secondary. She's built different. Since she's one of the tankiest characters in the game, I think a close match in Smash is Bowser. Undeniably strong, the only way to really balance Luisa is by making her mobility limited. Luisa's moveset is an unworldly leg press where Luisa drops on her back and cycles her legs. Anyone caught in the hitbox is whipped around and launched backward. I selfishly want Luisa to flex on us, but if she gets hit, she'll quickly pop her steel hips in the direction of contact. This counter will be super powerful, but short ranged. She could also wind up a deathly pressure punch that kills above 40% and has super armor, very close to Kazuya's front smash. A cool stage for Luisa is the Casita, especially because of how vibrant the colors are. Her victory screen includes the entire Manjigal family celebrating because family. Luisa. We've had mostly close combat characters, so let's throw it back to a ranged fighter. Have it your way. We got another big man, but this time he has hunting abilities. In the game, Gaston has a mix of hand-to-hand -hand combat, a bow and arrow, and a dagger in his kit. I'm thinking a heavier version of Link is a decent comparison here. Gaston's boots aren't just for looks. Like Captain Falcon, his boot bash is an oh-so-satisfying spike. He's able to leap forward and stab his opponent in this move we'll call the Beast Dagger. And his powerful bicep uppercut sends foes soaring. Think Ryu slash Ken's sure you can. Gaston might have the best taunts in the game because of how self-centered he is. He'll flex his hairy chest, do whatever this is, or start chugging beer. Gaston! Since we're in the Beauty and the Beast realm, I might as well include my favorite Disney princess next. Thank you very much! Okay, I know what you're thinking. There's other Disney princesses who actually fight, so why not include them instead? For one, I did. You just have to wait a little bit longer. In second, Belle isn't going to battle. Let me explain. In Smash, there's Pokemon Trainer who sends out their Pokemon to do the dirty work. This is gonna be the same for Belle. So who's gonna fight for her then? Beast would be too easy, so instead we have Lumiere, Cogsworth, Mrs. Potts, and Chip. They're fairly small and weaker, so they'll be fast like Pichu. Some moves for the trio include Lumiere's Candle Burst, where he leans into his opponent, lighting them on fire and leaving them burned for a bit. Cog Time. With the properties of Bayonetta's Witch Time, Cogsworth slows down the enemy momentarily. It'd be cool to have Mrs. Potts and Chip operate like the Ice Climbers and move in sync. Their Spinning Saucer attack has the duo spin in place, causing damage to any enemies nearby. The most obvious stage for Belle and her companions is the Castle Ballroom. Bell! Speaking of French influence, we're going down south for the next villain in our cast. We gonna find ourselves a frog! Look, I have to include Dr. Facilier because he reminds me of a Nintendo Man. villain who was overlooked way too many times for Smash. And no, being a spirit fighter or assist trophy is an insult to his reputation. For any of you who are familiar with Smite, I can see a lot of crossover between Baron Samity and Dr. Facilier. For a movement, I could see him smoothly dancing around the stage. And because it doesn't make sense for him to be in hand-to-hand -hand combat, all his moves are spells. Inspired by Baron Samity's ultimate, Coffin Pull is where Facilier thrusts himself on top of a coffin, then, similar to Kirby's inhale, pulls enemies towards him. During this time, they can't escape and receive more damage the longer they're in his pull. For you gamblers out there, the cards is a twist on Mr. Game & Watch's judge attack. Each time the move is activated, a tarot card is displayed above Facilier. Its value determines how much of a damage buff or nerf he gets for the next 10 seconds. To honor his nickname, Shadow Burst involves sending out a wave of shadows towards the enemy, which erupts on impact. A fitting stage for Dr. Facilier is the Cemetery of New Orleans. Dr. Facilier! Our next fighter is the definition of evil. Stand back, you fool! With lots of abilities to explore, Maleficent is a super fun inclusion. Like Dr. Facilier, she doesn't engage in melee attacks in her human form, but once she reaches 70% damage, she transforms into her iconic dragon state. The dragon is for sure slower than Ridley, and almost too powerful to the point where people would complain that Maleficent was unbalanced. For her moves, Maleficent has, in her human form, Sleeping Beauty, which is as suggested by the name, puts enemies to sleep. When Raven Strike is used, Maleficent's Raven flies off of her to attack the opponent if they're in range. Then, in dragon form, the Fiery Blaze has a brief window for an opponent to attack before she unleashes Fire Breath like Bowser but this creates more damage and knocks them back when finished. Her Cursed Bite breaks shield and cannot be countered. It also kills above 20%. I mean, I did warn you that she's going to be overpowered. Along with her usual black and purple drip, we have this black swan option from the live action movie, which I admittedly didn't watch, or any of these Pinterest couture options. Maleficent! To make things lighthearted again, let's inject another protagonist in our mix. We're traveling back to the early 2010s with this pick. Now I've had enough of her. Let's try that again. Ta-da! 
using her hair as a weapon is a no-brainer. Rapunzel is light on her feet and acrobatic, so I'm thinking she moves a lot like Sheik. Because of her long hair, range attacks like Min Min make sense here with a couple exceptions. For her moveset, we have Rapunzel lashing out her hair in a perfect raid whip that sends opponents flying. You see the strength Rapunzel shows here casually doing pen tricks with her cast iron? Her only move without using her hair is the Frying Pan Fury, a close range attack of successive frying pan swings. If you're in a pinch, her healing hair move will save you as it provides 10% healing and invincibility for 3 seconds. Granted, it takes a few moments for her hair to activate its powers. Differing hairstyles along with outfit changes is essential here, so I looked at this artist's interpretation of things. I also enjoyed this artist's style because, well, I didn't watch the Tangled series, but it seemed to have a lot of cute outfits. Rapunzel! Let's get a little extraterrestrial with this next pick. Ow. This mischievous alien is just as hard as you'd imagine to fight in battle. He's small, fast, and strong. Star Wars Battlefront 2 players who played Yoda would be familiar with the style I'm going for here. But yeah, he'll have to be a featherweight to make things more balanced. When Stitch performs his Ohana role, he curls up into a ball and whizzes across stage with immense speed. His UFO experiment allows him to call in a UFO that teleports an enemy to a random spot on the stage. This will shake up the match flow. The enemy has to be standing in the UFO's reticle for it to work though. And who can forget his carrot explosion that does intense damage to whoever is in its blast radius? For Stitch's wholesome one-liners, we have... Aloha! Ohana means family. Stitch! Our next fighter blends both human and animal characteristics. She is a witch after all. <laughs> This larger-than-life villain has the build to match. Since she's on land, I can see Ursula gliding across the stage with her tentacles keeping her up. I imagine her kit is a mix of tentacle attacks and magic. Beware of Ursula's tentacle bind, where she wraps her tentacles around players to squeeze them three times. For my Pokemon players, think of Tentacruel's wrap move. Inspired by her Kingdom Hearts boss fight, Ursula's lightning can be used as a defensive tool. Two bolts strike on both her sides. Ursula can send out a whirlpool, which sucks in opponents before sending them flying. Oh, and Ursula's taunts need to have a dream dramatic flair to them. Of course, the giant Ursula, while maniacally laughing, needs to be here. And she could whip out Trident's Trident, Breakfast Club style. We'll have Flotsam and Jetsam cameo as they swim around her. Ursula! Since we're already out on the water, we might as well introduce our final villain. I seem to have this fondness for tall, slim villains, but that's for me and my therapist to sort out. The fighting choreography from the movie Hook was better than the animated movie, so I'm drawing inspiration from there. Because of his cowardly nature, it's fitting for Hook to be a light and fast-moving character. I think Marth is a good template for him. Captain Hook is also a swordsman in the game, since he's usually fighting with a cutlass. I can see him fighting as elegantly as Raphael a la Soul Calibur 2 with his fencing flair. Captain Hook uses his sword to deflect any incoming projectiles with his pirate parry. His Peter Slash involves him jabbing his opponent with a hook before delivering a powerful slash. Hook's Fury is a command grab where Hook lunges forward to grab his opponent before tossing them up and skewering them with a bunch of strikes. Captain Hook has the special ability Plank Walk, allowing him to walk a plank's length off the stage momentarily because it's canon. Captain Hook! Our final pick has proven skills as an all around fighter. This roster wouldn't make sense without them. Let's go home. A warrior through and through, Mulan has a large arsenal of weapons to use along with her martial arts mastery. Because of this, there's lots of room for creative combos. She's a heavier, more powerful version of Lucina. To be honest, I just wanted to include this move because of the song, but anyway. Reflection works like Joker's move Rebel's Guard with a long active window. Projectiles are sent back to their user and all attacks are negated by half. Her avalanche firework is similar to Snake's remote missile. It has a shorter startup time, but you can't control it. Mulan's dishonor under a cow allows her to throw down enemies before putting them in a headlock, leaving them stunned as they question why they even challenged Fa Mulan in the first place. In addition to her everyday outfit, we'll have Soldier Ping, Soldier Ping in armor, at Ralph 2, Matchmaker, and Final Battle. Mulan! And with that, we have the final Disney Smash Brothers cast. Let me know which characters you'd play. Shout out to these two videos for inspiring me to make this one. And if you enjoyed watching this video, I recommend you watching this one next.